Hey guys, Mike from MPI, Military Paranormal Investigations. This is my paranormal go bag that I keep with me at all times. One of the things that I wanted to go over that I get asked a lot is what's in my go bag. And I thought I would share with you guys today some of the items that I carry that may be a little different than what you see in your typical paranormal investigator's kit. One of the questions we always get asked is what is it that we carry with us when we do an investigation? Now that is kind of a tricky question because it could vary from, from investigation to investigation. This is just a quick bag that I can take. I can, it's easy to grab, it's easy to go, and it's easy to keep all of the gear that I use. This is my personal paranormal go bag as I call it and this is what I use to research if a client calls and I need to go to a house real quick or I need to go I want to go out on a trail and I want to look for some things I can take this with me and it's got everything that I need in it to do a basic recon or scout investigation so today I thought what I would do is go over what I carry actually in my everyday carry bag and this is what I take with me it's a little different than probably what you see in a lot of situations now, this is a bag that I keep in my truck at all times. We do this more for data gathering and research. So I thought I would kind of go over that. Now, to start with, my bag is the uh, is a Drago tracker. There's plenty of other bags out there on Amazon. I'll, keep a, I'll put a link to this dis with this description in the notes. But to start with, it's just a typical tactical backpack. You can kind of see it's a, like a 30 liter bag. But one of the things that I like about it is it has these Molly attachments on it so that I can keep the different attachments for each of my gear. What I like about that is I can take off if I know that I'm going to be hiking on a trail to go look for a specific set of evidence, I can take off the things that I don't need to kind of lighten my load a little bit. And you'll probably be surprised at how much I pull out of here. As you see it right now, this is its full configuration for what I carry. That's not necessarily all inclusive. If I know I'm going to do a specific investigation, then I may add or take away or add another bag or something like that to go. But this is what you see. I'll kind of go around the outside of the bag. I'll let you again. I'll let you kind of see it. What I'll start with here is the straps that's on the front. With that, I keep a basic compass, a safety whistle. You never know if you're gonna be out in bear country or something like that. Uh, or if you get lost and you wanna signal for help. I keep a GoPro on me. Um, it mounts to the strap and I can turn that on and be able to film what I'm seeing as I'm going down the trails. I keep my primary radio. This is a, uh, I'll catch a lot of flack about this from the ham radio guys, but this is my Beofane. This is the BF F9 V2 Plus, and we are licensed radio operators, and we keep this with us, got a little better range. What I like about this as well, too, is I can catch the weather stations. I can also, if I need to get on any of the frequencies that I need that I have pre-programmed to signal for help or anything like that as well. Over here, this is my first attachment kit. This is my crypto kit. So if I'm gonna go out on an investigation because we got, you know, someone reports that they might've saw a Bigfoot or something like that in an area, this is what I keep. It's pretty much just basic things that I need now, but I keep this kit and this is a pre-measured amount of casting material that I take with me. Typically what I'll do is I'll throw a couple bottles of water in there as well. It's got a hydration pack capability as well. And I can, you know, easily cast a, a pretty decent sized track with what's in there. I actually also keep a specimen collection cup. It's sterile. And I have another um, sterile, it's got tweezers and things like that in it. If I need, if I'm trying to get, you know, if I need to collect hair or something like that, a hair sample, I actually have sterile gloves in my first aid kit, which I'll cover in just a minute. I can set up and gather either hair, um, whatever it is that I'm trying to gather, 
cast a track, anything like that. Over here, I also keep a tripod. Now this tripod comes in handy, but I keep a camera. Um, I actually have mounts for my smartphone and that sort of stuff as well. But I can either record myself collecting evidence for data verification purposes, or I can set up for an interview. If I'm gonna interview a client or interview a witness, I can set up a camera and actually do a quick interview with that. And on this side, this is my game camera. It records video and audio. It's just a cheap little deal I got from Amazon, uh, Woe Sports, but it got really good reviews. You know, it's night vision capable, records HD video, uh, high quality pictures. It's eight AA batteries. I always try to keep a fresh set in there. It takes a memory card. I also keep a flashlight. This flashlight typically stays in my truck. This is a stream light. It's LED and regular incandescent bulb. Uh, lasts for about four or five hours. I keep a headlamp on me if I'm out any time at night. I keep a little flashlight here that's on a quick carabiner. So with this, if I were to run out of batteries or something like that, I can quickly find another set of batteries and it's here on the side where I can easily grab it. I got a little selfie stick here for filming content or something like that. On the bottom side, this is one of my primary pieces of equipment that I carry. This is my EDI Plus. It records EMF, temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and vibration. It takes an SD memory card. You can set it to record the data. What you typically see people carry is like a K2 or is a meter that measures change in electromagnetic field. Well, this does the same thing. If I get an EDP that has an EMF fluctuation, electromagnetic uh, field fluctuation, and it has a temperature change, a pressure drop, I can record all that data at one time, uh, which again goes towards the verification process. I'm not just out there doing an EVP session, which is you know electromagnetic voice phenomena. It lets me go in and collect many different points of data at the same time. On the front, this is where I would put if I had like a map tube and actually secure maps to my backpack as well. I have my first aid kit. Now I'm not gonna go really in depth on my first aid kit because a first aid kit is a first aid kit. It's got some sterile collection bandages, that sort of stuff. Always keep some bug spray. You know, if you're here in, the, in Texas like we are, the mosquitoes can take you away. So it works really good. I got sunscreen and hand sanitizer. That's what I mainly use that for. Um, we keep a trauma kit if we're gonna go out and do long-term investigations or something like that, you know, in remote areas or anything like that. But this is just basic bandages, that sort of stuff. I've got my sterile gloves. If somebody needs to grab this quickly, they can just pull this and it'll come right off the bag and somebody can take the first aid kit with them uh, wherever they need to perform any first aid. I'll tell you a little story. I actually got a fish hook in me. I, we found a lure, got stuck on my backpack and then it actually hooked me. With what else I have in my bag, I was actually able to clip the fish hook and remove it and then actually bandage myself as well. I do have one final one here that this one stays on here all the time. This is where I can strap my phone, probably the most device that's used more than anything are our digital audio recorders. And I picked up a couple that I have extras in here, but our primary is this Olympus. And I'll, I'll put a link in the description of what we use. We have been using these Olympus ones for forever and they work really good. They're dual mic. They have a little stand that can come up. And if you wanna download the data, you can just stick that in your laptop and it's got a line in and a line out, which if you were wanting to actually listen in real time what was going on, or if you were doing an interview, you could plug up a mic and be able to record a little better audio for that if you're trying to record a client's interview or witness interview. But our audio recorders, we use those more than anything. Um, these are what we standardly use, but I actually have another audio recorder that is probably my favorite that I'll cover in just a little bit. Also in here, this is one of my favorite little pieces of equipment. This is my Seek thermal device. And what it does is it plugs up to my iPhone and it renders, and I'll show a video clip of it, but it renders a thermal image. It's actually pretty decent. It's not the greatest, but for $200, it works 
extremely well for what we use it for. They have another model called the XR, which is the extended range. Um, it works pretty good for outside. I kind of like this one better because once you get long range anyway, you start losing some quality of the picture. It's quick, it's cheap, it beats a $3,000 FLIR. Um, just for the price point alone. It's not, again, it's not the quality of that, but it works really well. But that's pretty much it for all of the attachments. Up here, this is my quick pouch. It's easy, I know what's up here. I've got a standard flashlight that I can quickly grab. High visibility so that I can see it if I were to drop it. I keep a little paracord, this comes in handy for if I need to tie back something, strap the game camera, anything like that, paracord, useful for me and different things. I keep my headlamp. This is my main flashlight that I use. I really enjoy the Coast Lights. I've never had one fail. I've used them for many, many years. We're not sponsored or affiliated in any way with the Coast Lights. What I like about this headlamp is it's got a red bulb as well. Um, typically at night, if I'm traipsing through the woods or in a building, I want to be able to see, so I use the red light. It doesn't burn your eyeballs out so that you can, you can see um, in the dark still once your eyes get acclimated and the red doesn't affect that. I also have a UV flashlight for tracking uh, you know, blood or anything like that. Blood shows up black if it's any other thing. Um, a lot of times uh, we've done investigations where someone may have done some sort of sigil markings or something like that. You can actually see. It, it lights up the proteins and whatever that you're using, so or whatever that you're viewing. So it works pretty good. I really like the little UV light. It's fun to play with. In the front pouch, this is my pretty much my tech pouch. I keep a pair of sunglasses. I wear glasses. These are my clip-ons. Uh, keep a pair of sunglasses. You never know. One of the main things that I carry are just uh, quick backup batteries for charging my cell phone or any other piece of electronic equipment. We've got a little locator beacon if I were to get lost. You can turn that on, it makes it easy for you to see from the air. I've got a little emergency light that I keep that flashes. It flashes in red or you can make it light up. What I primarily use that for is if I'm in a building and there's a, a trip hazard or something like that, um, set of stairs that you don't want to walk off of in the dark, you can set this up so that you can see. And again, it's red so it doesn't burn your night vision out. I keep pens, pencils, a little mini screwdriver that I can access equipment compartments to be able to change batteries, a little razor knife that I keep in there. I know I keep just some stuff like some Velcro and double-sided tape just because those always come in handy. You never know when you're gonna need that or need to fix something or fix a piece of your gear. Um, now starting to get a little more of the good stuff. This is the first big pouch. And in here, I keep a notepad. That's probably one of your more important things. You want to be able to take as many notes as you can to, to of course, for data collection. And I've got an iPad that goes in my little kit. And I, on that, I keep navigation maps and it's GPS operated and that sort of stuff. That's preloaded if I'm going to go to an area. Uh, it's also some other apps and things that you can use um, if you're doing interviews and things like that. A lot of tech apps that you can use for that. I've got a tri-field. People always talk EMF and they take their K2 around. This is more, a little more of an instrumentation that you can use to verify what you're actually reading on that. I've got a little tape measure. You never know when you need to, you know, if you're measuring track, trackways or you want to measure a doorway or anything like that for height comparison. A little six foot tape measure comes in really handy. I've got Another little tape measure in here. Just one of those cloth like sewing tape measures, but again, this is handy. You can lay this out and actually see a full length scale of what you have there. Uh, of course, I have my business cards. And then I've just got a pocket knife and a multi-tool. I think everybody should have that on them at most times. I usually keep a pocket knife in my pocket. Then this is my actual main pouch. I keep just a pair of binoculars little small mini pair. Again, if I'm gonna go out in the field for extended periods of time, I'll, of course, I'll replace that with a quality unit. I have, this is my little quick grab bag. I can take this out. And inside there, I just have a typical little Fuji, a 5100 fine picks, but it's great. I can do interviews with this. I can take photos at a location with this. 
Um, of course, nowadays with your smartphone, you can do all of that to you. This is my backup. But what I like about this, if I'm gonna do an interview, a witness interview, um, or record myself, if I'm gonna do like a post debrief where we, where we record ourselves afterwards telling our story, again, it, it's quick and handy. You may not have time to necessarily always write down everything that happened. I can set this up. I can put it on my tripod, set it on a tree limb, set it on a dresser, and record myself giving my debrief. Going back to my camera back here, I have a couple of other backup radios. Um, if I go out and somebody's with me, I can actually give them a little radio. We can have communication. I have a little little stands for my phone or for my, I keep an extra GoPro in there that I can strap or leave in a tree and I've got GoPro mount. Just a quick little grab bag with camera and photo devices in them. I keep, this little selfie light I picked up for like five bucks, but it clips to your phone and it works great if you're trying to see some stuff, if you wanna set it up, uh, clip it to a tree branch or clip it to something, just quick little cheap things. Again, we're all about data collection. So in here I keep a, a wind and ambient weather device that kinda gives you wind speed and wind change, wind direction, that sort of stuff. And then I have a lightning strike detector. If we're, this is for safety as well. You know, if you're out and you have a storm coming up, you can actually kind of see what's going on with that. I also keep, I have a little pouch full of my batteries for the different devices, for the digital audio recorders, my camera, the game cam, the EDI, the flashlights. I do not like to run out of batteries, especially with my flashlights at night try to keep those all changed but you can kind of see just a quick little get grab bag I can do everything from paranormal ghost type stuff with my EDI I have game camera audio recorders digital cameras thermal device backup batteries things to measure the temperature and the weather and the wind speed I have my tri-field detector flashlights specimen collection kits I have my trusty notebook. And then lastly, again, if I'm doing interviews, this is my favorite audio recorder. I use this all times. I use this on our parabolic mic that we made that we're gonna have another video on. My Zoom H1N, it's 99 bucks, pay like 120 bucks and you can get a kit uh, like you see here. It comes with a little windscreen, charger, if you wanna plug it up to the wall. It's got a little stand, memory card, just, it's a great little recorder, but this is also what I do for interviews as well too. If I'm out, we talk about what's going on while we're doing it, just so that we have, again, more data verification. I don't typically run out there with just a K2 or something like that, because I don't think that you're gaining anything from that. You may get a response and you may get a little fun out of that, but if we're trying to seriously investigate a location, we try to collect some data, we're gonna try to gather as much footage, evidence, whatever you wanna call it, as you can. That's where we try to take that in that direction. So I hope that you found this useful. I hope that you like my little go bag. I, I really enjoy it. It's a fun little bag. Again, I hope that you enjoy watching this. One of our purposes, we want to start creating more content like this for you guys. Kind of tell you what, where we go, what we do differently on things. Uh, we're also filming video series that we've been out filming on and those are coming up. But what we thought is we would start doing this by doing a couple of how-to videos. I've got a couple more coming up and get you guys interested in what we're doing. Hopefully, you will like and subscribe to us. You can find us at www.militaryparanormal.com. You can find us on Facebook at Military Paranormal, on Instagram, Military Paranormal. Twitter is MPI underscore Paranormal. And our podcast, our primary host is Podbean, but we are on every major podcast player out there. You can find us on anything if you just search for Military Paranormal Investigations. And I hope again that you find this useful and you'll come back and see us next time.